Hey there, game developers. It is me, Titan Hex, and I'm here with another tutorial. All right, so this time we are going over the resource manager, and we're going to start talking about some of the resources that you can use in your game. The idea here is that you want your game to be as compatible for as many operating systems and environments as possible. What that means is that you want it to be available for both web players operating systems just uh, as a standalone game or an exe um, as a mobile device uh, a game that can run on mobile uh, both ios and android so there's some of those resources that we need to take into account for the most part though it's mainly in sound that that's going to occur um, everything else is typically uh, pretty easy to manage and go through so we're going to go ahead and start with animations um, these are your basic animations that you can use in the animation tab of the database and other animations you can see we got a number of them here and you can usually put two together using these images so this and this will create uh, a list or a series of animations that we can use so there's quite a few things we can do with this, um, but in order to even access these, we need to, of course, import them. And you can import them, uh, I believe, as hmm, as a certain size. So they only take, I believe, 128 by 128 of size. Uh, so your image has to be divisible, divisible by 128, otherwise it probably won't work. Yeah, that looks about right, yeah. So make sure that your uh, animations aren't over the 128 by 128 limit. As you can see, uh, it's it goes about one, two, three, four, five squares across, and then you can go down as many rows as you like. Just make sure you're always five squares across, and it's 128 by 128. So that's kind of what you, the limits you have to work with uh, in the animation. Uh, category so just keep that in mind there's ways around it you can uh, of course stack enough images together to sort of create this um, so as you can see if I, I put enough images just touching each other uh, then I, I don't have to worry too much about the border but the animation is going to be a little harder to work with but that's just sort of something you have to deal with here with the animations so just be aware of that Next, we have the two Battleback folders. The Battleback 1 folder is typically the upper ground. So, or uh, the, for, the foreground, yeah, the foreground actually. So the foreground here, um, and you usually leave the top half transparent uh, with some fading in order to make sure that it meshes properly with the backgrounds that you can use. So the backgrounds will typically take place here um, well, actually, you know what? You don't even need fading. That's only for certain things like uh, clouds. Uh, that's where the fading usually comes in. For the most part, you want the foregrounds here to be solid. Uh, well, okay, a little bit of fading. But for the most part, you want them to be solid, and you know that these are going to be the foreground. And these are going to be the background that will be behind it, uh, or actually over top of it. So even though it is a background, it's going to go over the top. And this is going to slide underneath it. So this is going to go underneath. And this is going to go over the top. And then you have a nice little mesh. Um, so just keep that in mind. You're going to be, you're going to want to mix these properly. Uh, but you'll have a lot of options to create some pretty cool environments using those. Next we have the characters, which are your images you use for events and actors. So basically, for characters, you have the normal. Uh, and the only requirement for normal ones is that they are um, three. So unless you have a, a plugin that changes this, there are going to be three rows. Um, and Wait, no. Three columns, four rows. And that's really the only requirement for one size. It doesn't matter if this is size 48 by 48 like it is right now or you can even bump it up to 128 by 128 just be aware that a character will only ever fill up one 48 by 48 tile so they even though you can increase the size to like 
128 by 128, which would be these, probably these, uh, would it be three or four? Be three. So it'd be these three tiles. It would take up, it would look like it takes up these three tiles, but in reality, it would only be interactable through this tile. So somebody would have to step onto or touch this tile in order to interact with the 128 by 128 image. Uh, as long as it's three by four, you should be okay. And typically, you're going to have 12 of these, four uh, in the top and bottom rows, um, and only one or two, two rows, four columns uh, for these. So obviously you can only have 12 and they have to be uh, four in row and row, two rows. So just keep that in mind. Um, whereas these are three by four, any size, just remember that it has to be three by four and you should be okay. J that's why uh, big monster here works. And we're gonna talk real quick about why this doesn't follow that rule. So this doesn't follow that rule because we use the dollar sign at the very start of the file name. So when you use the dollar sign at the start of the file name, it just means it only needs to be th or, yeah, three by four and it doesn't need all the rest of the uh, sheet in it. So it can be a single set or a single character is basically what this is. So this is just a single character. Um, and that's what the dollar sign means is that it, it's just a single character. So next we have the exclamation mark. So the exclamation mark or ex exclamation mark uh, is meant for typically objects. Um, the thing about the ones with exclamation marks is that they will not be six pixels up from the line. They will be exactly on the line. So typically a image uh, is or a character is six pixels up off the line um, and they always will be transparent in grass whereas if you have one that has the exclamation mark in the front they will be right on the line they won't be adjusted six pixels up and they will typically be um, they, they won't be they won't interact with grass they won't look like they blend in with grass so just keep that in mind um, it's typically it, it's generally good for doors and things like that. So you'll you'll see it on the door ones. Uh, so the door sits flush with the bottom of the tile, uh, and that's kind of the point of it. Next, uh, we have uh, well, obviously you can use both the dollar sign and the exclamation mark in one, like the gate. Um, but for the most part, this is kind of uh, the rules here. Um, they can obviously be any size as this is uh, 128 by 128 and it can be um, as long as you put the dollar sign you only need you can put use one character um, so that's kind of how that works of course you will always have it in the format of I believe down right left up here let me take a look real quick preview yeah down left right up is always going to be the format that it uses for characters all right so next we have the enemies uh this is a pretty simple one you will always be able to have any size enemies it just has to be a static picture unless you have a plugin which allows you to animate uh the monsters in which case you just follow the plugin instructions on animating characters but this is just generally uh, a pretty, just a picture. Nothing complex about enemies. Uh, faces, of course, have to be, I believe, 128 by 128. Uh, you can't have it bigger than that. Um, and they don't have to, of course, be faces. There's no way the software recognizes faces, but they, you can put anything here. Um, maybe you could put just a single full-bodied character or whatever you want. But generally, it's meant for faces, and this is used in a bunch of stuff from the characters, uh, portraits in the menu, to the faces that you use when doing dialogue. So there's uh, the format here. There's no special like dollar sign or, or exclamation mark. The format here is always a four by two, just like the uh, characters. So. They, they typically have the same format, but there, of course, isn't the rows and columns that split it. It's just a simple four by two. 
So it always has to be like that. Just remember that. And always one uh, divisible by 128. Um, so just remember that. Next is the parallax. Uh, there is no requirement for parallax. Parallaxes will always repeat from, I believe, top left down to bottom right. It'll just tile out um, until there's all, it fills in all the space. So if you wanted, you could shrink this down to a 128 by 128 tile or a 48 by 48 tile, and then it'll just start filling it in behind uh, when you use it in the map options. So just keep that in mind. There's nothing special about this. It's really, it's best if you make it so that it does repeat if you want it to be tiling. Uh, so a tiling one is generally a good idea, but not all of these are tiled. Uh, some of them are meant to be stretched. Um, I believe, I'm guessing this one is not tiled. No, this one I'm pretty sure is not tiled. So this one would be just a simple image like this. Um, it, it's just, it's all about how you, you plan to put it into your game like this. You would probably put some sort of um, foreground here using tiles and then make it look like they're following an ocean in the background. So that's, that's sort of how parallaxes work. They're just pictures. Nothing's big. Uh, same with pictures here. You can do these in any size you want. Um, and the picture will just draw one single instance of that picture wherever you tell it to draw it. So next is the side view actors. Uh, side view actors are, of course, in this three, uh, three format. So they animate in threes. And I believe they animate... Uh, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, if I remember correctly. So they they loop back and forth like this, and they usually only do these three unless you have some sort of plug-in. So that's sort of what you're looking at. Um, nothing really big about this. It's it's the the big thing about these is that they are different formats. So this would be casting. Um, I'm not sure what all of these are. These two look similar, but I think this is like a defending or ready stance. No, this is, is it defending? Uh, one of these, they, they, there's a format to them. By the way, uh, if you ever go to help and hit contents, you can get a whole lot of information uh, about the resources, about how these are supposed to be laid out, things like that. So it, it can be very helpful. Um, next is the side view enemies which are uh, very similar to enemies here except they're meant to be put in side view uh, they're not animated of course they're just pictures and that's just sort of how they're laid out but this one is for side view um, so nothing particularly special about that one uh, it's generally a good idea to have them uh, to have a both a front view version and a side view version. So that's kind of why they have this um, and why they're the same between them. But if you open up some of these, like maybe this one, 2-1, uh, it's probably gonna be the same actually. Yeah, but it, it might vary. Uh, maybe the side view enemies can be smaller, so yeah. So next we have system and there's quite a few things here in system. Balloon is the balloons that you use when you do the uh, the bal show balloon in the character section of the events commands on the second tab. Uh, button set, this is for mobile games. So these are buttons you hit to do things for mobile, um, for the mobile game. This would be your confirmation. And I'm not, I believe these are, hmm, I'm not 100% sure what these are, but um these, oh wait, no, these are just some of the other buttons you can use like shift and whatnot. Uh, but for the most part, this is uh, buttons that you can hit to do things in the game. So next is the damage numbers. Uh, these draw the numbers in battle. Uh, you can change them however you see fit. These are the plain ones and I'm sure you can get better ones, uh, but they're very simple and uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Um, so it just replace the numbers with whatever numbers you see fit. This is your game over screen. Uh, that one's pretty easy to figure out to make sure it's the same resolution as your game. Uh, icon sets are of course allowed to be any size. So you could, uh, as long as it's 
the same amount across, but it can be down as much as you need. Just make sure it's divisible by 32 and that each icon is 32. So just keep that in mind and make sure there's always a blank icon up here in the top left. And you should be good there. So make sure this is blank just to signify no icon, um, but and then just start filling in icons as you see fit. So next is the loading screen. This is mainly used for um, mobile apps, but there are a few instances where your computer may use it or a web browser will use it. So it's good to have the loading screen and have something nice there. Uh, this is your splash screen. Just feel free to replace this image with whatever you know splash screen you prefer. Uh, Shadow one is over uh, your plane, whatever airship you use is going to have this beneath it so this will be below airships and this one will be below flying side view battlers so you can i believe you can designate which side view battlers are flying and then it'll put that shadow below it so these are the states and these states just appear um above the in actor or side view actors or side view enemies actually shows up above anybody's head uh side view and front view um, so it'll just show up above the head of the enemy or player and they are you designate those in the in the uh, database so in database uh, go to states right here and your overlay this is basically the overlay for states right here in the resource manager so this is your overview for states right wherever I left it right here so that's those they they correlate next is the weapons so you use these for designating which weapons use which image in the system section so this is going to be the image uh, from all that that list that whole set of weapons starts here uh, keeps going and then you have the user defined ones on the third weapons tab right here. So this one is the user defined ones, uh, but for the most part, they have ones that are just designated. They of course don't have to be anything special. Uh, they can be whatever you want, but um, you don't have to make the sword one here a sword. Just remember that um, they need to be the proper size uh, for your characters. I believe there is no limit to the size so these can be basically what i mean is that this can be any size just make sure that you have three by three by three by three by three by three and then up here three by three by three by three by three by three so just make sure you keep that in mind um it can be these can be any size as long as they're that three by three and you're, you're definitely going to want to line them up properly with the side view battler that you put in so just try to keep those things in mind and you should be all right. Um, playing around with it may be your best bet. So this is the window. Uh, you can do a little bit of modification. So this is going to be the image or the color used or the, the sort of the overlay used. Um, so it's good to keep this color the same and you can maybe add some filigree or something like that, some sort of etching or things like that to make it sort of personalized. You can change this border and the um, arrows as well as these arrows this by the way is an animation uh, I believe this is to make it look like it's pointing where it bounces the arrow bounces a little you can of course change this as you see fit if I'm guessing correctly this might be the selection uh, portion um, I think this might be used for selections and it's the highlighting portion next we have colors so this is your default text color these are text colors by the way uh, they might also be used in the uh, battle system so be a little weary about how you change those and I'm sure there, there's some information on them in the resource manager or not the resource the help under content so there, there's probably some information about what each one of these is specified to um, but these are basically from zero uh, color zero color one color two color three these are used in text by the way uh, so this would be, you could get green text out of this, blue text, etc. Um, and you, you access those by when you go to, nope, when you go to text, show text. And uh, here, let me move my mouse for a sec. 
So when I do forward slash C, I draw the subsequent text in the nth color. So C and then uh, the color number and the words. And of course, you're going to get those different colors. Preview is great for figuring out uh, maybe uh, what color some of these might look like before without having to go check all the time. So one of the tricks here is, of course, if you want to not have to guess, you just go to the resource manager, you open up the window under system, and you just take a look at these colors and just know that this is zero, one, two, three, four. So if I did three, I'd get green, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just keep that in mind and you can figure out the colors in show text. Uh, a lot quicker, a lot easier. So then you have your tile set layout, and then you have your A1 through A5. These are your lower tiles, and you have some grass ones and your water ones. Your A1 is typically your animated tiles, um, and then you have your A2s, which are um, set in this A, this is A, this is B, and then this whole thing is C, and it sort of fills these in by saying this is what it looks like when it's a square, like just a easy square. Uh, this is sort of the corners uh, when you need a corner piece um, and these these I believe are the inside corners and these are the outside corners and these get split up uh, half the size just like that so this is a uh, course 48 by 48 tile uh, whereas this is split up I believe that would be 24 by 24 and then it just sort of uses these as the corners so just keep that in mind in out, outside corner inside corner um, and then just the flat square parts and it, it it does it in that manner um, and if you play with those a little bit you might figure out where it goes and how to make it work properly you just have to do this one first and then you line it up with um, with something like this you try to, to get it lined up well and then uh, you can figure it out by taking this like if I took this portion right here uh, a 24 by 24 section here in the middle um, and then I took this section here a 24 by 24 right here in the middle and then I just sort of lined them up so that the corners are touching each other um, then I could figure out how to make this inside corner and the outside corners so it's a it's a it's a little trick uh, very useful um, so that's sort of how you line up some of these and then you have the BC uh, D and E which are not, not very complex those are those are pretty simple so you just go here and uh, there they just go on top and you sort of lay them out how you see fit um, so that's sort of how that is then titles are very similar to the battle backs you have the foreground or the background I guess and then you have the uh, thing that goes over the top usually a filigree or anything like that um, so you can set up what ha set this up however you like. It's exactly the same as uh, the battle box here, but this one is uh, uses a frame because it just works for a title. So just know that you can make a whole bunch of different titles like that. And I'm sure there's a plugin that would allow you to have random ones of these, uh, so you could have a random title screen every time. So next we have BGM, BGS, ME, and SE. Uh, the thing about these is that you should have these um, in both OGG and M4A formats. So what OGG is, is typically for, I believe, iOS uh, uses OGG often. Um, and M4A is typically used in Android. And your computer can pretty much read both of these. But they, they the reason you need one of each is just because your your the mobile game um, a mobile game needs both in order to work on both android and ios so just keep that in mind um and there's converters there's free converters online that'll change in m4a to an ogg you can grab audacity and i'm sure you can save in both formats uh, so don't worry too much about it just make sure you have both of those uh, and you should be good uh, same with background sounds, sound effects, ME. Make sure that you have those both in M4A and OGG format. And you should be all right. Uh, and there's nothing special or magical about it. Uh, it's just a simple format. So next, uh, if you want to import things, just choose the folder. Hit import and then choose the 
folder that you want have the image in and just import it after double clicking it and it'll put it right there in the folder or you can just do it manually from your own uh, window from your own explorer box uh, or whatever you have for maybe you have a Mac so however you want to import it uh, this is probably the easiest most universal way so just keep that in mind it's a good way to do it next you have DLC and you can check your DLC or you can download DLC and then um, when you download the DLC, you can import it using this and it should import it as a, a nice file pack. So um, very useful there. You can, of course, export images out of your projects uh, if you need to. Uh, you can delete anything from here. So it's a nice little management tool right here. So just keep that in mind and you should be good. It's uh, pretty useful. And of course, we went over sound test before um, and we'll go over the plugin manager and event searcher another time. I think we're pretty good here. So hopefully this little bit on uh, resources and things like that has helped you out. And thank you again for tuning in to my tutorials. If you need to leave a comment, uh, maybe tell me a little bit about your game or a, re a tutorial you might be looking forward to or hoping that I'll do. Um, like and subscribe it is always appreciated uh, lets me know that you guys want to support me and want to see more of this and patron uh, sign up for patron I, I have some great ideas for awesome re resources that i can give to you guys uh, things i can share with you uh, get you guys extra early access to things um, copies of evented systems i make and just great things like that uh, i just really want you guys to, to see the uh, this vision I have of, of making these amazing games and teaching people how to make their own amazing games and just um, I, I, I'd love to see support on that so I appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next tutorial